video will show you how to improve the performance of your website by adding expires headers to your HD access file. Well, I say HD access, I actually mean .HD access to be technical. Now, what the heck is an expires headers? Well, when set up properly, expires headers tells your browser whether an item like an image or a CSS file or an audio or a video file can be stored in the browser for future access or if the browser has to go all the way back to the server or the source to get that item. For example, whenever you set up an expires header for one of these items like the CSS file, then when the visitor returns to the site, because they're not going to experience the benefit of this the first time they visit your site, only the second visit on. But whenever they do return to the site, that particular CSS file, along with all the other items that have the expires header set for, will load a ton faster because they are already stored in the visitor's browser, and the visitor's browser does not have to go all the way back to the server to get those items. So not only does your visitor experience a much faster load time on your site, but you're saving a ton in bandwidth as well. Now, for this speed tip to work, you do need to be on an Apache server, which most are these days, so that's not that big of a deal. Also, if after adding your expires headers code snippet, the tests are not showing the expires headers feature being active, then contact your host and ask if they have the expires header module activated and while you got them on the line or chat or whatever, ask them what code snippet do they suggest that you use. Also, if you're running an e-commerce site or a membership site, you might want to contact the plugin or software creator of your e-commerce program and ask them if there are known issues with their software and expires headers. And if so, what do you need to do to avoid those problems while enjoying the benefits of the speed increase? Now first, let's go ahead and run a test to see where we are in regards to the browser caching, also known as expires headers. Now I'm going to use GT Metrics because this guy uses two tests, that being the page speed from Google and why slow from the developers over at Yahoo. So let's first off go ahead and copy my URL into my clipboard, come on back here to gtmetrics.com, paste it right in here, then click on go. And depending upon the size of your site, would depend on how long this is going to take. Mine's just a dummy site with not a lot of content on the front page, so it's not going to take long to give it a test. And we test pretty crappy. So we've got a 68 with page speed and a 76 with Y slow. Now what we're going to be adding will not necessarily increase these scores, but it will increase an item that affects these scores. That is, with page speed, leverage browser caching pretty poorly with a, with a 25 and with Y slow we're looking for add expires headers they're the same thing tomato tomato just with Y slow they call it expires headers with page speed they call it browser caching but here we scored a big fat zero so let's go ahead and up these numbers now first off we want to get the code that we want to add to our .htaccess file and that can be had at a site called HTML5 Boilerplate. And whenever we get to HTML5Boilerplate.com, left click on source code, come on over here and left click on .htaccess. This just has a whole bunch of different code snippets for your .htaccess file. One of which is the one for expires headers. So we can just scroll all the way down here and I'm looking for something inside of this title area that says expires headers. Now you can do a, a search like control F and just type in your search box expires headers and it will be much faster than what I'm doing here. But I believe we're right here. Okay, this is what I'm looking for everything between this box here and this box here I want to copy into my clipboard so from the opening if module to the closing if module contains several different code snippets for your .ht access file that regulates particular items or particular elements within your WordPress site now then if you decide not to have some of these items like maybe you don't want to have this one here or maybe you don't want to have these here you do want to have this one here expires active on because that's going to turn things on for you let's go ahead and right click and copy this now once you've got this copied you want to head on over to your 
cPanel control panel. And I've already logged in here. And then go to your file manager. Just left click on that. And you want to look for the .ht access file in the root directory of your WordPress install. Select it. Then right click. And then left click on code edit. Or select it and come on up here and left click on code editor. Either way, you'll end up at the same spot. And the big difference between code editor and editor is that with code editor, you got these numbers over here. And paste that code in here. And there we are. Now then, again, you want to make sure that this is included. You might decide not to have this guy in there. Totally up to you. I would say leave it in there, and if it doesn't cause problems, then you're good to go. Now, to further explain this, if we come on down here under Media, let's say under Images that you've got a cat image on your WordPress site, and for some odd reason, you all of a sudden do not like cats, you want to change that image to a dog. Now then, if you have this set for, let's say, one year, then your visitor, upon the first visit to your site, will get that cat image in their browser. Boom, it's stored there for the next year. And two months down the line, you've changed that image to a dog. Now then, if you do not change the name of that image, then every time that visitor comes back to your site, they're not going to see the beauty of the dog. They're only going to see that cat image until this guy expires or until they clear their browser cache, which they can do by holding the control key down and hitting their F5 key. So if you do add images or any content, make sure that you're doing so with a new name. Make sure that that content has a different name than an original or an existing element. Otherwise, your visitor, whenever they visit your site, will only get the item in the cache. And one thing on this that I do not like is this guy right here, the favicon. The favicon, by the way, is this little image right, right up here. That's the favicon. That, for me anyway, never changes. If I'm going to put one up, it's going to stay there for as long as I have that particular domain. So having this at one week is silly to me. That should be forever, but I don't think there is a forever. So I'm going to go ahead and go with a year. So any changes you make here, come on up here, click on Save Changes. We're done here. We're going to close this guy out. We're done here. We're going to close this out. And let's come on back here. And remember, for the Y slow, we've got a fat zero. And for the page speed, we had 25. Let's go ahead and rerun this test. Now our numbers here under page speed did not improve a whole lot. They actually didn't improve at all. They did over here under Y slow. So you can see with Y slow, they do have a lot more emphasis on the benefits of adding expires headers. As a matter of fact, if we come on down here, now we're under page speed. And where are we at here? Leverage browser caching right here. We got 100. So from 25 to 100, major improvement there. Under Y slow, add expires header from what was it, 0 to 89, another major improvement. Now that's doing things manually. There's another way, and that is by adding a plugin called Auto Optimize or Auto Optimize or however you pronounce that. This is a plugin that pretty much does the same exact thing. I myself would rather have a limited number of plugins on my WordPress site because the more plugins that you have, the more load you have on resources, and in some cases, what little speed improvements you have from the plugin can be eaten up by the number of resources that's being used on your server. So this is totally up to you, however you want to go. Myself, I'd much rather hard code if possible, and by doing what I just showed you, you're not adding any additional plugins, and it works just fine. But if you don't want to get your hands dirty by going into your .ht access file, and that's the case with a lot of folks. They just you know, are just terrified of getting into the code thing. If that's the case, here's a plugin that will help you out immensely. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on adding expires headers to leverage browser caching. Thanks for watching, and you have a great day.